happy rom com -a -thon. Um, I just wanted to actually come on camera first and show you her cute outfit that we were going to wear today for the first day of rom com -a -thon. But we just came downstairs and she has since sort of like spit up on it. So we're going to have to change her outfit. But like... This is her cute outfit because it's the day before Valentine's Day and we have a different Valentine's Day outfit. Elliot. <gasps> Hi. Yeah. You're so cute. But now we got to change. Hello again. So it is much later in the day. We have changed Elliot's clothes, obviously. Gone to Costco. I've edited a video that's going to go up tomorrow, you know for today. Um, it'll already have been up by the time you guys see this video, obviously. But I think that means I've basically gotten everything out of the way so that I can now start reading. Obviously, this is the rom com -a -thon. I am going to be attempting seven books in seven days and seven activities because not only do we have a chart of prompts for the books that we need to check off or can check off as we do this readathon, we also have a chart with prompts for like things to do. So that's what I'm going to be attempting. If I was like really, really good about this, I would be attempting to put a vlog out every single day with one book and one activity every day. But that would then mean I would have to edit every single day. And with two kids, I don't think that's going to happen. But I have six books currently picked out that fit into six of the seven prompts. I have one prompt that I have not filled out as like, this is what I'm going to read yet because of the fact that I feel like it's one of the easiest ones to double up in case I do not hit seven books in seven days. So um, we have a prompt for Sweet Home Alabama or to read a second chance romance. I will be reading Once Ghosted Twice Shy by Alyssa Cole. We have a prompt that is called Friends with Benefits, which is to read a Friends to Lovers. For this one, I'm gonna be reading The Trouble with Friends by Cheryl Phipps. We have the prompt Dirty Dancing, which is to read an age gap. I don't know what the kids are doing, but they think it's funny. I'm going to be reading Made for You by Anita Sunday. We have a prompt for Four Weddings and a Funeral that is to read a book that features a wedding. I'm going to be reading The Rehearsals by Annette Christie. We have a prompt for Ten Things I Hate About You, which is to read Hate to Love. I'm going to be reading Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. We have Crazy Rich Asians, which is to read a book with a person of color main character. I'm going to be reading The AI Who Loves Me by Alyssa Cole. And then the last prompt we have was Love Actually, which is to read a dual or multi point of view book. Uh, and like I said, I think many of the books that I'm going to read potentially have dual point of view in it. Um, so that's going to be an extra. Like if I can fit all of these in and read all six and then have an extra day where I can read another one that has dual point of view, I'm going to do it. But if not, I'm sure I, at least the love on the brain probably does. I feel like We've had dual point of view in different Allie Hazelwood. Like, I'm sure we have. Oh, or, or the rehearsals. The rehearsals, I just opened it up and it had the word Tom on one of the chapters, which means Tom obviously has points of view. And then there's also Megan. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. And actually, speaking of the rehearsals, this is the first book that I'm going to read, mostly because it's not my longest book. I think my longest book actually is Love on the Brain. Um, but it's like my second longest out of the ones that I'm planning to read for this week. And I want to read as much as possible. I didn't want to pick like my shortest book and finish it today and then be like, eh, I'll be fine. I'll start another one tomorrow, which I feel like I would do. So I want to start reading this one, read it some more tonight, and then hopefully finish it tonight. But if not, I have some time tomorrow to read more. You know what I mean? Like try and intersperse my longer books with my shorter books. Um, so that I'm hopefully finishing seven books in seven days. This is a book that I picked up in, was it November or December of last year at a book signing. So this is actually an author that lives in Arizona. Um, and I was so excited to meet her. And this was a book I definitely had on my radar when I went to this like gigantic book signing. Um, this one is about a wedding for sure. But basically our characters are the bride and groom and something happens like during the rehearsal dinner, something like that, and they decide to call the wedding off. Then a Groundhog's Day like time loop ends up happening and I'm assuming we figure stuff out and hopefully get back together. Cause you know, romance. But 
I love the cover. I'm super excited by the premise of the little time loop. You know, it's a little bit fantastical. Um, and so yeah, this is definitely going to be my first book. I think it's just over 300 pages. Yeah, without the acknowledgments, it's like 310. So this is technically doable in one day for me. I just haven't read 300 pages in one day in a little while. So yeah, I'm going to stop talking to the camera now so that I can hopefully start reading with two kids that you hear playing in the background, but they're being good. And yeah, I will update you guys as we continue going about the day. I am, like I said, going to also be doing the sort of like activity challenges. And so I'm going to pick one of those for later today as well. And I will let you guys know what I choose as we continue on. Okay. I'm 76 ish pages into the rehearsal so far. I was not expecting to get where we are already, like the reasons for them deciding to call off the wedding. Uh, I don't even think I can really get into it because the back just says like secrets and things. Um, so I'm very curious to see where this is going to go. We have just barely gotten into the like Groundhog's Day aspect, the time loop stuff. So I haven't really experienced that too much except for knowing like we're getting there. Um, both of their families are horrible. Let's just say that. Both of their families are horrible. Um, that's not the whole reason that they decided to like call off the wedding and stuff. Um, but yeah, based on everything that they were hiding or, you know, like, yeah, each of them had at least one secret that like snowballed into them calling off the wedding. I'm curious to see where this is going to go because it is shelved as romance on Goodreads. Um, and it does say romance and romantic and all that kind of stuff on this and on the back and all that kind of stuff. So it has to be in some way. Whether I decide to actually classify it as romance or not by the end of the book, that'll be up to me. But I'm counting this for my first read no matter what. So yeah, I'm very curious about it. I definitely want to read more. But I need to go pick up my sister from school because she did have her first play rehearsal today. So it's a little bit later than normal, but it's time to go do that. Issues that have come up so far. We've had to get the helmet. We're checking out some allergies all this kind of stuff um, And it's a good thing. It is a good thing that we're gonna go check this out, but it's 8 a.m <laughs> Which isn't too early, but like I had to get up a little earlier than normal um, And so that's what we're gonna be doing. I did end up reading more of the rehearsals last night I'm at like page 190 like I was so close to page 200, but it ended at like a pretty good chapter that I was like, you know what, I don't want to continue because it feels like drama is going to get stirred up again. I'm not sure how I feel about this book. It is still something that, like, I can't fully believe that it's romance. But on Goodreads, it's listed as romance. And I know, I know, technically people can put whatever they want to put on Goodreads for, like, how they shelf it. But everything's also talking about how romantic stuff is, and I just don't feel it because these two characters are not good people. Let's just start off with that. I talked about how their families weren't that great, and like, yes, their families are not good, like at all. But I don't know how I feel about them either. Um, this is going to be sort of spoilery. I'll put spoilers on the screen. Um, so you guys can avoid it if you want to avoid it, but one of the issues they have to overcome, overcome I guess, is that our main female character of Megan cheated on our guy character like eight years ago. They've been together for like 12 years. Well, the thing is, and again, spoilers, during one of the time loops, because they've broken up multiple times now, like they've called the wedding off multiple times uh, because of the time loops. In one of the time loops, she decides to go 
and cheat on him again with the exact same guy that she's been avoiding because this guy apparently has been in love with her for over eight years like the entire time they have not been together he's been in love with her and he wants her to run away from his from her wedding with him but like she has been avoiding him so it's not like he's even really talked to her that much either but like he's been pining for her for like eight years the night before her wedding he's like hey run away with me and she said no because she apparently loves tom our main guy character um but then in one of the time loops because she's mad at everything she's like well what if the other guy was better and like to me it doesn't feel like she has romantic feelings for him like she doesn't love him either but she's gonna have, like she, she cheated on him again she cheated and i'm just like okay cheating is like something that i don't believe in like even if technically she was supposed to be with this guy at the end of the book which i don't think it is because her and tom are trying to work through their issues even if she was supposed to be with him she cheated on somebody else like why i don't know then we have tom again probably more spoilers because it's not in the summary even though it does happen very early in the book he gets promoted at his company but that promotion means they're gonna have to move from new york to missouri and he never told her apparently this is something that he's known for months he was just waiting until it was for sure because he didn't want to stress her out um and so it's for sure now the night before their wedding and it comes out at the rehearsal dinner that she's going to be moving to missouri without anybody asking her opinion at all and so like these are two very big issues her cheating on him obviously is a big issue even though at first it was like eight years ago so it's an older thing but it's still a big issue but then his thing is not even asking her opinion she already changed her job for him it's not what she wanted to do in the first place like everything just feels like he doesn't listen to her he only listens to his family like he's a very overbearing family um these are very big issues to have before your wedding and we're now in this time loop for them to sort of figure these issues out we have both characters megan and tom in this time loop together and so we have alternating point of view chapters for them um i've never seen a time loop and i say seen because i've seen some in tv shows movies you know etc i don't think i've really seen one where there's two main characters that are sort of in conflict like most of the time when you see a time loop it's one character going through something and having to figure something out and then you know time loop solves itself so i am curious where this is going to go it's not necessarily a bad story but it is not feeling like a romance to me at all even though that's what everybody thinks it is you know what i mean so hi elliot um i'm gonna finish it today because i have like an hour and a half left of that one i'm also going to be starting once ghosted twice shy because i have that as an ebook and it is actually i think my shortest book of the entire readathon so i figure i can finish one of my longer books and probably also potentially finish the shorter book today also because it's an ebook as we're going to Elliot's doctor appointment in case there's any long wait times etc etc hopefully i'll be able to get a little bit of reading done we shall see um but that's the plan sorry for all the spoilers but like i said i'll put it on the screen so you guys can just sort of skip over those parts um but yeah that's how i'm feeling today so we're at a red light now um yeah let's do that <laughs> okay we're back from Elliot's appointment she is currently taking a nap i once we got home decided to take my cover matches your fit picture i probably won't end up posting it until tomorrow since today's valentine's and i have a picture plan for that on instagram but i took it quite proud of it actually um just because it's the only book that i had planned that i knew i had like some colors to go with it um so we did that one um, that's also the book I'm going to be reading as soon as I finish the rehearsals, and I have a couple packages here that I just wanted to open up on camera, because, you know, it's a vlog, why not? The first one here is from Redbubble, it's going to be a new case for my phone, because mine 
had been getting bad. Um, mostly because I drop it, Presley drops it. The cases really, really work. Like, I get the tough cases from Redbubble. Um, not sponsored or anything, just these are the ones that I've been getting for years. And my current is this, like, space cat. It's a UFO cat that is beaming up fish. Like, I love that one. But I did end up finding a different artist this time that does, like, bookshelf type of ones and there was a couple different ones that I was interested in and you guys voted on Instagram for it and you picked Library of the Rings I think is what it's called um and so it's cats as Lord of the Ring characters um with books and it's very very cute I love how there's smog here as well but we have like Frodo and Sam and Merry and Pippin and I know there's a Gandalf one and a Gimli and Legolas all that kind of stuff like I love this quite a bit um so yeah we're gonna put this one on my phone um but then i also have a package here of clothes this is from i think piper and ivy yeah piper and ivy um it's something that i was seeing as ads on instagram and they had bookish shirts and stuff so i did actually end up picking a few let's see what they look like so here is a navy one very cute, you know, book and flowers, like floral. The good thing about this company is a lot of the shirts actually had different colors that you could choose from when you were going through the designs. Oh, here's another one. This one's green. So I picked the colors to go with it, but this is another book that like opens up to scenery, which I thought was cute, you know. Don't think it's in a specific book world, but I liked that. And then I have a black one that just one more, just one more, just one more chapter. I feel like this is a design you see a lot with like bookish merch and stuff. Not exactly like this, but you know, cute stuff. I'm very happy with them. They do need to be washed so I can wear them, but most of my uh, closet now is bookish stuff. So that's the haul I have. I'm going to be reading soon. Oh, I did not mention. Um, so we did come back from Elliot's appointment. We saw the nutritionist specialist there at the allergy place. Um, the only problem is usually you see them after you do your allergy stuff. But Elliot's allergy appointment, because we did schedule that first actually, isn't until May 30th when she would literally be 11 months old. So based on everything that we told the nutritionist and everything like that, she's like, you need to try and get in sooner. We were already on a wait list for cancellations and everything, but she said, call and see if there's any way they can get like an urgent first appointment sort of thing, like an urgent new patient, that kind of thing. So I called them and they do have a cancellation at a different location um, at 2.30 today. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to do that this afternoon as well. So I did not get any reading done because I actually had to fill out paperwork earlier, but that's the next plan is this afternoon. We're gonna do that, I think. I think I got my phone in my new case. There we go. Very nice, got my phone in my new case. Although it's looking like it's not fitting very well. Hmm. The case feels a little too wide, but I'm sure this is the exact type of case I was supposed to have in the first place. Hmm. Is it smaller? I don't think it's smaller. It does look different on the bottom. Did Redbubble change their phone cases? Do I not know what kind of phone I have? Let me see. I'm pretty sure it's an 8 plus. But this 8 plus case is not currently fitting on my phone case. I might need to order a new one. Well, that's sad. I don't know what's going on. Don't ask me questions. <laughs> See, look, this is my old case. It actually says eight plus. This one here that is supposed to be for an eight plus is too small. It's way too small. This is not the right thing. Okay, so we are back from Elliot's doctor appointment again. They have diagnosed her with F pies um, for peanuts specifically. Uh, and we have like a whole list of foods that are mild to moderate to severe for F pies, which is a type of allergy 
that is not like anaphylactic or any of that kind of stuff. So it doesn't react for any like antihistamines or epinephrine or anything like that. It just ends up being, they eat something and once it's in their body, they then react to it by vomiting a lot. So we're avoiding peanuts and we're very slowly going to take care of that list of stuff to see if she is allergic to anything else. But you know, that's fun. <laughs> I'm glad we have at least gotten it sorted out before she was 11 months old, like our old appointment was going to be. Um, and we now have another package of things. This one is from Hello Lovely. I ordered some sleep shirts I absolutely love their sleep shirts, sleep in them every night. Again, not sponsored, but from their latest launch, I don't think I realized that this one was like silver letters, but that's pretty cool. So this is a sleep shirt, gonna be oversized obviously, but it says book lover, and it is very like silver letters. I didn't expect that. I don't think I was able to tell it that well in the picture. And then I also, another sleep shirt, this one's gray with white lettering. It says, Cozy Readers Club. So I'm very excited. They're very long. They go down like halfway thigh, like mid thigh. Um, but yeah, so lots of bookish goodies. I should also say, yeah, you can sit in mommy's spot. I should also say I have not read anything more in the rehearsals, but I did get halfway, like over halfway. I'm at like 51 or 52% of Once Ghosted, Twice Shy. It is 100% second chance. Um, we start off at the second chance part, like these characters meeting up again after having a sort of fling, like they knew it wasn't gonna work because one of the characters is um, working for pr the prince um, from book one. This is in the Reluctant Royal series by Alyssa Cole. This is actually like one of the novellas that's supposed to be between like book two and three or something like that. Um, and I've read books one, two, and three. Liked them well enough, like three and a half stars on average, uh, but I never read the novellas, which is why I wanted to read this. But our main character is actually like the assistant to the prince. Uh, and so they apparently had some sort of like fling during book one uh, and then broke it off. And we have gotten some flashbacks to that as well. Um, I'm halfway through. Liking it well enough, again, the writing style's fine, the characters are fine, but I think because we're at a mix between the second chance part and then the flashbacks to the first time they were together, I'm not really feeling the romance that I would be expecting to feel um, because this is a very short book. It's like 101 pages, like total. Um, I don't know, I was just expecting a little bit more of the actual romantic feelings. We'll see how it go it you know continues going because I'm halfway done. I'm planning on finishing the rehearsals today and once ghosted twice shy because I only have like half an hour left of that one. But yeah, just wanted to give you guys an update on that. I did read that while we were waiting for the doctor and stuff at Elliot's appointment. So, you know overall a productive day. <laughs> Even if I didn't expect to have to do two doctor's appointments, you know, it was good. Good morning everyone. Um, I'm about to start editing the video that is going to go up on Thursday, but I did want to let you know that I finished Once Ghosted Twice Shy last night. I think I'm giving it three stars. It just was so short that I did not get that romance that I was really expecting. It definitely does the whole second chance trope though, so like it definitely fits for the prompt that I was going for. We get the flashbacks of what the first chance was. We are currently going through the second chance. They have a resolution. It just didn't quite do it for me. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. So it's just like right in the middle of the road. Um, but I did finish it in like less than 25 minutes last night. So it was very quick to read. I did not finish the rehearsals because I was so tired yesterday after all the doctor appointments and everything that I went to bed at nine. So that is on the agenda for today. I'm also going to be editing, like I said before. And then I think because of that, I might end up picking another shorter book um, of the ones that I had on my TBR to fit into today to hopefully actually finish two books today uh, and then possibly pick up a longer one tomorrow. Um, I think that is going to be the goal. I also need to post my outfit 
of the day thing for um, today that I took yesterday, but that also means I'm gonna need to do another of the activities today. I think I'm gonna be going with one of the movie ones just to, you know, keep it a little bit easier. I might do the retelling and maybe even put on The Lion King for Presley. If not, I've been really wanting to rewatch Ever After, the like Cinderella retelling with Drew Barrymore. Um, so that is also a possibility to have on the TV this afternoon sometime um, in and out during our day. You know, like not anything that I'm like 100% going to be watching, watching, but something that we can have on the background. So those are the options and I will let you know when I finish the rehearsals and when I've started another book. Hello everyone, Elliot's here because it's just about to be nap time again, but I did actually end up choosing Rosaline um, for my retelling. Um, it was something that I had seen in general because it's actually on uh, Disney Plus until like February 15th, but it had been on Hulu for a while because I think it's actually a Hulu like exclusive in general, like when they made it. Um, but obviously it is a retelling of Romeo and Juliet through Rosalind's part. Um, it was actually pretty cute, um, pretty funny, because it's one of those sort of retellings where obviously it takes Shakespeare, um, you know, how they talk and that kind of thing, but it moves it into like more of a modern day talking. The music was very like now, um, and it had some funny bits, and I, I really did like that. Um, and then at the end, when it was doing credits, it said it was also based on a book called When You Were Mine by Rebecca Searle, and I've looked that up, and that one actually looks like it's a retelling of Romeo and Juliet, sort of, but in a modern day setting um, with Rosalind. But it actually looks like, instead of Romeo, the guy's name is Rob, because it's sort of modern day, I don't know. I'm not interested in reading the book, but I did like the movie and I thought it was interesting that it was like a retelling of a retelling of a retelling, basically. Um, so, yeah, I think that's gonna be it for now, because like I said, she is going to need a nap. It's time for afternoon nap. And I'll probably try to finish my book during nap time. Okay, she's back in my lap. She is a mama's girl, 100%, but I did want to say, oh, it's under my iPad. Where's Presley? Down. There you are. I'm Presley. You are Presley. I finished The Rehearsals by Annette Christie. Yes, in my opinion, I don't necessarily think this is a romance. If it is, it's not in my wheelhouse. Like, these characters are not characters that I necessarily like. This relationship is not necessarily a relationship that I like. Um, I could have seen it playing out a couple different ways, potentially, if it was going to be, like, strict romance. Um, and so it was just not what I was expecting. It is very, very messy. The story is not written badly. But because of what I went in expecting and what actually happened and all this kind of stuff, I think I'm giving it a three star. But it's not like the once ghosted, twice shy three star where it was because it wasn't as good for a romance. I mean, I guess it wasn't as good for a romance, but I do think this is a better written story. Probably because it's also longer. It's like 300 and something pages. Um... But yeah, not exactly what I was expecting. I'm still counting it for my romance for Features a Wedding because it definitely is all about a wedding. Um, but keep in mind if you are thinking of trying any of the things that I'm currently reading for this vlog, it's not a romance. Elliot is trying to come off the couch or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I think I'm going middle of the road for this one just because it wasn't what I was expecting. It was still written well, but at the same time, everything was just so messy that I can't condone it either. You know what I mean? Like, it is very messy. Just go in expecting that if you're going to try this out. Um, 
So yeah, it is now going to be dinner time. I've already started dinner, actually. We are having Thai curry and rice. Um, and when I say I started it, like I'm not doing it from scratch or anything. It's like a Costco meal thing, but they're really, really good. And I'm planning on starting the Trouble with Friends by Cheryl Phipps today because I can read it on ebook. I don't know if I'm gonna finish it tonight, but I'm planning on at least getting some reading done later. Okay, so it is Thursday morning. Um, our power is currently out because SRP is doing a like power outage thing, which isn't anything crazy, it's just a couple hours, but that means hopefully we'll get some reading in. The thing is I'm actually DNFing The Trouble with Friends by Cheryl Phipps. Um, there's a couple different reasons, and I actually didn't make this decision until this morning, mostly because I wanted to sleep on it and see. I got like 50-something pages in, over a quarter of the way through. Um, it's not doing it for me. Part of it is the writing style. So far, so much of the book has been in these two different characters' heads. We do get both points of view, um, but it's like in their head of like, oh, here's what I do for a living, and here is what I feel about my friend, and like, this is the reason why. It's all past tense. It's all like just explaining things to you, and there's so much of that. Like, they're not even really doing how I feel in the moment. It's how I feel knowing this person for so, so long. So the writing style is definitely not doing it for me. Um, the other thing is our main female character of, oh, I can't remember her name. I don't think it matters, Jill, actually, because it's Jack and Jillian, so Jack and Jill was the original title of this book um, before they like changed the cover and the title and everything. So Jill, Jillian, she is like, oh my gosh, I hate my body because my boobs are so big, and it's like, why are we complaining about this? Yeah, no, she can't have the Play-Doh. And then the other thing is like, so she's the one that's in love with her friend. She's the one in love with her friend. And near the beginning of the book, because again, I'm only 50 pages in, they go to the beach, um, and he has a daughter from a previous marriage, and apparently this woman is like the spawn of Satan. Um, Jill hates her. He also is like, why did I ever think I was in love with her? I have no idea why I was ever in love with her. Uh, well, they go to the beach, and because Jill's boobs are so big, a wave ends up crashing over her, and her top falls off. And it's this whole thing, and this is where we have an inkling of him being like, hmm. My friend has really, really good boobs. I think I'm thinking about her in a different way than just friends. Of course, it's all lusty feelings. But, like, that's the incident that makes him think he might have feelings for her. Not the fact that he has, like, a six-year-old or whatever with this other lady and his friend is, like, the better mom to his kid. Like, I'm just not on board. Um, so I paused at that part last night went to look at some reviews and stuff because when I'm really not too sure if I want to DNF or keep going, I do then go look at reviews on Goodreads and stuff and I usually don't look at reviews for books unless I'm not sure and I need to sort of see what are other people thinking? What are other plot points that might be going on in this book? What is going to make me continue reading this book? Well, apparently she is going to get a different boyfriend that is not Jack. I don't know how, don't know why, whatever not love him, but then also get engaged to him, but then at the end of the book, of course, it is friends to lovers with her and Jack, and I just, I'm not on board. My kids are fighting. Um, I'm not on board. I'm not on board. So, yes, I'm going to DNF this. Um, which is fine for my normal TBR game because I'm allowed to DNF things and that counts and this was one of the books that I actually picked um, for my TBR this month and it's just it's just not working um, so I don't have to do anything different for my TBR thing the thing is that means I have not fully finished a friends to lovers book for this readathon um, and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do for that I think I'm gonna currently move on to Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood, which I think is like the enemies to lovers, hate to love, rivals to lovers, one of those things. I think it's I think it's hate to love technically. Um, 
and I'm gonna use that one for that prompt. So I'm just gonna move on to the next book I was going to read anyway, and then I'm gonna see if I have anything that is friends to lovers. I know I have um, Danny Brown, um, Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert that I'm pretty sure people do classify as friends to lovers because they become friends first, but I don't know if I have anything that's like on ebook because and obviously. Yeah, you can't have Play-Doh. This is your brother's stuff. You can't have that. Um, I was hoping for an ebook because obviously the Ally Hazelwood is a physical copy. And I'm trying to have a little bit of both going or like alternate just because of the fact that ebooks are sometimes easier to read with her. Um, especially like at night. I don't have to worry about the book light being too bright. Um, and then during nap time, sometimes it's a little bit easier. I know. She... It's becoming a little spitfire, guys. Look at the camera. She's in a cute little outfit today. <laughs> cute girl. However, she's learning how to say no with her head, and she's been doing it all morning. She wants stuff she can't have. She's learning to say no. Um, she <laughs> She's going to be getting tired soon because she woke up early today. But she wants her brother's stuff so badly. But yeah. So I'm going to be moving on to a different book currently. We'll see if I can then figure out another book for that prompt. Because I was hoping to do seven books in seven days to finish all seven prompts. Um, but I would still need to figure out a friends to lovers thing. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> this is Elliot. That is Elliot. She's a baby. She is a baby. She's learning to crawl on the floor. Hey, yeah. Oh, and apparently learning how to stand up a little bit. Hello. Hey, yeah. You gotta be gentle. Hi. Hi. Okay, so it is almost 6 p.m. I'm 78 pages into Love on the Brain, which is a little bit slower than I thought we were going to go. Um, but, you know, we're reading. I think I'm just going to take the rest of this readathon a little bit, not necessarily slower, but like a little bit more leeway with myself. It's Thursday. I have plans. I'm hoping to do one of the activities tonight as well, but I'm also in charge of dinner, that kind of thing. Um, but like I said, I have started Love on the Brain. I like the beginning of this one better than the love hypothesis because that one was a little bit overly in your face about like how big the main guy character was. Like they went into that so, so much in the first 50 pages. This one didn't. Uh, it did take a little bit for the two characters to get together in the fact that like they were in two different states at the beginning of this book, um, but it's a previous, like they knew about each other previously, they've tried to work together previously, uh, and now they're on this big project for like NASA and stuff with neuroscience and all this thing, uh, and he and her are supposed to be like co-leads but like two different parts of it, um, and we're at this part now where she like just doesn't have any of her equipment and it was supposed to be here and she keeps getting the runaround and she now went to go confront him because she's pretty sure like he's the one that's sabotaging her even though it would also be sabotaging himself um i don't know i'm very interested in more of this one um and i definitely want to continue tonight hi dude you want to come up you can come up <laughs> oh cough cough faker Faker. I definitely want to continue more of this one tonight because I am really enjoying it so far. I'm curious to see why she doesn't have her stuff. I feel like this is one of those like hate to love, rival to lovers sort of thing where like he has feelings for her. She hates him for reasons that are just like miscommunication sort of stuff like I have that feeling that like he has been in love with her for a while or at least really attracted to her for a while so I'm very curious where this is gonna go um but that is the book that I'm currently reading I have since also realized since I DNF'd the trouble with friends that technically I think I told you I have Danny Brown as a, like friends to lovers but I just recently recently um this month the book came in for Afterlight, the January Afterlight from Illumicrate, and it's X's and O's by Amy Lee. 
that is also technically friends to lovers because it's something about our main character thinking that like she has too many exes and like wanting to go back through her exes and like give them a try again sort of thing and I think she's roped in her either co-worker or neighbor to help her with it and then they realize that they have relationship feelings for each other even though they were just sort of like platonic friends at first um so that one is also an option the thing is again it's a physical book when I was hoping for another ebook but I do have that one so that's another option uh just depending on what I want to read because again I still have a couple other books on this TBR um that I wanted to get to and it's Thursday I mean I have Friday Saturday Sunday but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish seven books I was really really hoping to I don't know we'll have to see I'm just gonna enjoy my time reading how about that I'm just going to take my time enjoy my time reading and so yeah What are we doing? Cookies. Cookies? Yeah. We are gonna make cookies. I have a recipe for like the Nestle Toll House chocolate chip cookies. However, <laughs> we are gonna put this stuff in it instead. So it's peanut butter chocolate mix. I'm gonna take out the pretzels just because I'm not entirely on board with putting pretzels in our cookies. But besides that, it has Reese's Pieces, peanut butter candies, peanuts, milk chocolate peanut butter cups, um, peanut butter flavored drops, and dark chocolate chips. So I feel like that in general should be really good. That's our dishwasher. Um, so yeah, so instead of just chocolate chips, we're gonna put this stuff in there. working with now I took out all the pretzels we do have some peanuts we have the peanut butter cups Reese's pieces peanut butter chips and dark chocolate chips as well so those pretzels are now for Presley yep but do you want to help me with this first we're gonna pour this into here and then we're gonna mix it up can you pour good job
cookies are actually in the oven. I wanted to talk to you guys because I mentioned at the beginning of this week that Elliot has been diagnosed with F pies to peanut. And obviously the stuff that we're making has peanuts in it. Um, basically her reaction is throwing up a lot. But we are avoiding peanuts for her. So although we are doing this today because we've had it in our pantry for a little while uh, and I wanted to do it, she's not gonna be eating any of this. Basically, we have a list of like foods that have mild, moderate, and like severe potential for F pies. I have been informed by the allergist that usually kids only have one allergy. Um, looking at the F pies foundation website yesterday, it looks like it said like just over 50% of kids have like two or more. Um, and I saw some people on Instagram because I was looking through the tag for it where some of their kids have multiple So we are basically just doing like one day at a time trying a new food in the morning Seeing how she reacts um, If she reacts at all and like the good thing would be is like no reaction and so this morning she had blueberries which um, Was a food that we had done previously and I was pretty sure is a safe food, but like I wanted to try again we haven't had any reactions and I think we're fully basically past the time of like where it would happen. So blueberries should be a safe food for her. She did seem to like it as well. We just mashed up some and took out the skins. Um, but basically I found this baby's first food chart. Um, I had to give them my email and like sign up for the newsletter, which I'm fine with um, in order to get it. But it was a free first food chart from whatmomslove.com and it has vegetables, fruit, grains, dairy, proteins, spices, and flavors. And we're going to be going through this and sort of checking off things since these seem to be a very popular, you know, foods for babies, that kind of thing. Um, so we checked off blueberries for at least one exposure. We're sort of like starting over. Um, but we wanna make sure we don't have any like cross contamination and stuff like that. So I've already talked to my husband and my parents and everybody that lives in the house. And because we're gonna be having stuff with peanuts, we don't want to potentially cross contaminate her where she would have a reaction and vomiting and stuff like that. So we just need to make sure that we are really, really good about washing hands after we touch anything with peanuts. So it's not an anaphylactic reaction. It will never be an anaphylactic reaction because they are two different type of allergies. So at least we don't have to worry about breathing issues and that kind of thing. We just have to worry about the potential for vomiting um, and diarrhea and then getting dehydrated from that. You know what I mean? Um, the good thing also is it does appear that F pies is normally an infant toddler thing and eventually the kids usually outgrow it. So eventually we should be trialing peanuts and making sure that she is over her reaction to that when she's older. It'll be a while from now, but I feel like we have the tools. Yes, we have the tools to do what we needed to do. So I just thought I would mention that here because I did mention the F pies thing earlier in this vlog. And yes, we are doing stuff with peanuts and peanut butter today, but she's obviously not going to eat it. And I'm gonna be very careful about washing my hands and everything like that before I like touch her or her toys or anything like that if I'm having one, because I will. Okay, so cookies are done. We actually just had lunch as well. Presley's eaten about half of his cookie. Um, and we'll see, they definitely, I mean, they're not like too big. They spread more, obviously, as they baked. And the recipe says this does like five dozen cookies. I got like three trays of eight. <laughs> Let's just go with that's how big they were expecting you to make the cookies and that's how big I made my cookies. So, hmm. I'm sure it would be a very good chocolate chip cookie, but I definitely got peanut butter bits. So it's very, very good. Elliot's in the other room with my mom, so I'm gonna finish this, wash my hands, and get the baby. This girl has figured out how to get on this side. We have a playpen semi-blocking off. Like, this is her area that she plays in. It's open, because she likes to get in here too. And there's a tiny little gap between the couch and the playpen. And today, she has figured out how to get over here with the books. <laughs> Elliot! 
Elliot. Hey, sweetheart. You're not supposed to be playing over here. <coughs> Elliot. Yes, I'm talking to you. <laughs> you can't have polyfill either, girl. Okay. So, we are over here now because of the last clip. I have another package. This is again from Hello Lovely. When I ordered the, um, what was it? Sleep shirts that came in earlier this week. I also ordered some replacement shirts um, that I've had before from them. Absolutely love them. Wear them all the freaking time. So much so that the actual design on them has started to come off in the wash. So I repurchased them when I ordered those sleep shirts and those ones have just come in. It's so weird to see them like fresh. The designs are fresh guys. Oh, you can't have my pens and stuff. So we have this design here on the black shirt. It's the read what you want, uh, dress how you want, kiss who you want, love who you want, be who you want shirt. Like I wear this all the freaking time. And then I also have another black sort of rainbowy shirt. Give me the flat. This one, again, is in black. I think you can get both of these like in a white if you want it. It's the Introvert Book Club. Again, so, so weird to see it fresh. I've actually had compliments on this shirt, um, the old one, when I was out and about, like out at places. People are like, oh my gosh, I love your shirt. Where'd you get it? Um, that one, for sure, I have gotten compliments. But it's just so weird to see it. Like the ones I have are so worn and washed that like literally the design is flaking off. So I have two more book shirts and a baby that's literally taking everything off of my desk. <laughs> um, I guess while I have you here, I have gotten to page, we all match, look pink, 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 to page um, 190 in The Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. I'm actually really enjoying this one so far. Um, like I said, I think at the first instance of when I was reading this and talking to you guys about it, um, I think this one starts off better than The Love Hypothesis because of the fact that we're not having so much of like how big the guy character is thrown in our face in the first 50 pages. Yes, the characters do mention it every so often, but it feels much more normal, like how a traditional romance would be because that is a trope thing that a lot of people do and have in their romances um but the love hypothesis it beats you over the head with it like it needed a little bit more editing at the very beginning of that book this one i'm liking a lot more um and i haven't fully seen the romance start yet i'm probably about halfway or so i mean that's where it looks like with my bookmark potentially um i mean i'm seeing the starts of it I'm hoping we get into it more because right now we still just sort of have the miscommunication stuff between the characters. It's a little bit better, but it's very obvious to me as a reader. And I'm not mad at it being so obvious, except for I'm ready at this like halfway mark for the characters to realize that they have had a miscommunication and solve it and get to the romance. You know what I mean? Like I'm ready for that. I feel like and I could be mistaken because it's been a little while since I read The Love Hypothesis. I feel like we got the characters sort of together a little bit earlier. Um, but that one was fake dating, wasn't it? Not like enemies to lovers. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I am enjoying it. Um, and because I am enjoying it, I'm trying not to force myself to rush through this book. I think I mentioned it a little bit yesterday. I can't fully remember. Um, but I know I mentioned that I DNF'd a book. I don't think I'm gonna force myself to do seven books in seven days anymore. I'm still planning on doing all the challenges. I made cookies earlier for my baked good, but I'm not gonna force myself to try and fit in more books if I'm enjoying myself and doing what I need to do. I still have a couple days left, like today's actually Friday. I have the rest of today, tonight, because I usually read a little bit while the kids are in bed, and then I have Saturday and Sunday. So I think I'm gonna probably finish this one and then potentially one more book. What that book is, I'm not sure. I actually don't even know if I'm gonna be sticking to the TBR that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, or if I'm gonna be going off the rails. Who knows, but I'm gonna try and read one more romance by the end of this video. Um, 
and I am enjoying this one. I actually am really enjoying this one. I just want it to speed up a little bit now that we've gotten like halfway through. Yeah, the camera is for mommy. <laughs> Elliot is right here. Hi, baby. Don't go to wedding. Do it. Do what? Do on the camera. No, not right now. Because mommy's going to talk to the camera. Mommy. <laughs> Presley. Mommy, um. No, you're okay right there. Okay, so it is Saturday night. I have just finished huh? Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. And I think I'm going to be going with... A four star. Um, I absolutely loved the love hypothesis um, when I read it. I think it was last year. I gave that one full five stars. It started off a little bit iffy, and I mentioned this like once before, um, because of the fact that there was so much like description of the guy character in the first 50 pages, and this solved the problem in this one. However, if we're skipping past everything that I talked to you guys about before with this one, the reason it's getting four stars is one, because we get like 300 pages into this book and it's only like 356 before our main female character of B realizes that she is in a relationship with this guy or like wants to be in a relationship because even when they sort of get into a relationship and start having sex and all these feelings and everything and like there are feelings and all this kind of thing she's like oh it's just a casual relationship and you can tell that he doesn't feel that way she obviously also doesn't feel that way but she is like so stubborn in her thinking that like it takes them till almost the end of the book to admit that like she's actually in a relationship and that just annoys me to no end um there was also one sex scene in here so there was a couple of them but there was one in here that was just so cringy the first one was pretty good the second one i could not stand i skimmed past it as much as possible and it was just it was just not good i don't know how one was pretty good and how one was not good but it was not and then the ending felt rushed the way that the ending in in sort of like the third act conflict came up in the love hypothesis was just so much better done than in this one it felt similar but in a sort of like stepbrother sort of way like it was trying too hard to be that person or not even like stepbrother but like when parents compare the kids you know like oh your brother's the golden child and you're not like it was just like they were trying so hard to be exactly like the first book and it just didn't quite work oh. besides that i really did like the actual like plot line of the whole NASA neuroimaging all this kind of stuff like the science aspects and like the characters were pretty good but I couldn't give it a full five obviously because of those issues but like those were the only major issues you know what I mean so besides that I did enjoy my time reading it it just had some little bits that I just did not enjoy as much um, but yeah so today is Saturday night I'm probably not going to be doing any other reading today at least. I also did finish my rom-com movie earlier while I was doing a foot mask that you guys saw a little bit of. So this is one of those like peeling foot masks. I haven't done one in years, but like I need to. So um, that was exciting. <laughs> yeah, you get to see yourself. <laughs> is that what you wanted? Yeah, you're cute. I know. Um, but so the rom-com that I watched was Your Place or Mine. It had Reese Witherspoon and Ashton Kutcher and actually a couple other um, famous actors in there as like smaller parts. And it was pretty good. Uh, again, I felt like it was a little bit... I wish there was a little bit more development in the actual romance in that one because it was one of those like 
they had an encounter years ago, they ended up being friends, but they were harboring feelings still, but they didn't realize it until later, that kind of thing. And so we didn't really get to see the development of the romance as much as the realization of it. And even that was a little bit, like I, I just wished a little bit more. Um, but overall it was, it was, it was good. You know, it was good. So I think that's gonna be the update for now. So the only thing that we have left for the challenges of like doing stuff is taking yourself on a date, which I do have a plan for that tomorrow. Um, I've been planning it since before this readathon was even announced. I was always gonna go, but that's gonna be a tomorrow morning thing. And then technically I am not doing seven books in seven days. I think I mentioned this earlier that I'm just sort of reading to read now um i took a little bit slower of a time with love on the brain like i probably could have finished it last night but i ended at a part where she was sort of like cranky like she sleeps with us and everything and she just got to a point where she was wanting to be held and i was like you know what i guess that's a natural stopping point um and then i finished it today obviously and I, I think I'm gonna start something else tomorrow. I just don't know necessarily if it's going to be something that I can finish in one day or not. I do have a couple other things that I had on my TBR that I might try. We'll see. I probably, like I said, won't pick one until tomorrow though. So I guess that is the update. It's gonna be dinner time, so we're gonna get some dinner and I will see you for the last day of the readathon. Okay guys, turn the air down because it's too loud. I'm done. They had nothing. Um, and like they had some stuff, but like even in the areas that were like newer fiction, it was so picked over. It was not worth it. Um, I waited like 40 minutes in line to get in and by the time I left, it was very, very, very busy. And the thing is, I got here at like nine something. We didn't get in until almost 1040. And they were supposed to be having people, not as many in there at once, to cut down on capacity. That's what they were saying. That's why we were waiting in line. Well, the line kept getting longer and longer after we got there. Like we got there when there was probably like half a line. And then by the time we got in the building, there was at least a whole line and like by half a line I mean like three rows a whole line was like up and down like six or seven rows um yeah there's not really anything I always double check the like sci-fi section and the romance the thing is their romance section is almost always the mass market paperbacks of old romance that like my grandma would have read um it's not my thing. They have a very small section of romantic suspense, which sometimes has paranormal romance. I found a couple vampire books, but not ones that I was interested in. Uh, and then sometimes you'll find paranormal romance stuff in the sci-fi section, but all the sci-fi I was finding was very, very old sci-fi, like, like by the older authors, like Alan Dean Foster and McCaffrey, that kind of stuff, like the old, old books. And I'm like sort of on a book buying band, so I'm also very picky though, and like I did not really see anything. I found like Midi One that I was semi-interested in, but it's the sequel and I couldn't find the first one. And I don't want to pick up the sequel if I'm like not entirely sure if I like the first one and I'm sort of like trying to be good about it, you know what I mean? So it's just one of those things where I I didn't find anything. I went to the kids section to look at their picture books and stuff for the kids. I think most of them felt either very old or felt self-published and not in a way that like I would have been interested in. It just wasn't good. I also was potentially going here to look for Stephen King books for my Stephen King project because I'm missing some books that I need to read. No Stephen King. Not a single Stephen King. They actually had a pile of like boxes and signs off to the side. Stephen King's sign was off to the side. They sold out yesterday. Um, so I guess that is something to keep in mind if I ever want to come back to the VNSA book sale. I need to come 
on Saturday when things are full price and by full price I mean like the paperback like mass markets are like usually a couple bucks and the hardcovers are like three to four sometimes five or six like not anything too crazy but I remember in the past like in the past like I used to come here all the time like when I was in my early 20s like with my grandma and stuff too we would always be able to come on Sunday and get boxes of stuff like my husband made me bring a dolly which yes I did drag around the entire time I was in there um and I didn't get a single thing you want to know what I got I got a paper cut on my finger you see it a paper cut that's what I got today at the VNSA book sale I mean I guess I took myself on a date a very disappointing date I don't want to date myself again but we at least did the thing Elliot just had a little nap are you awake now baby girl Yes. So one thing I did not mention is I actually did read some last night. I said I wasn't going to read anymore. I wasn't planning on reading last night, but I did. I actually started The AI Who Loved Me by Alyssa Cole, and I just finished it now. So this is going to be the end of this vlog. Um, I'm giving it four stars, so I think that's the highest rating I've given all week. No, I also gave Love on the Brain four stars. Um, I would actually say that this novella is more sci-fi than romance. Like, it's a sci-fi romance, but I do feel like it lends itself more to sci-fi than romance. But I really did enjoy it. And it's basically like what you think the premise is. It's a sci-fi romance between a woman and her neighbor, basically, who ends up being a, like, AI sort of thing not a robot he specifies that for sure not a robot um i did really enjoy it i think this actually would have benefited from being a longer book like i actually would have really enjoyed a longer book of this um but it was fun to read very quick to read and so yeah i think that's going to be it like i said before i did finish all seven tasks which i thought was fun i did not finish all seven prompts um missing like two i think we're missing like two potentially oh and three because i dnf the trouble with friends but that's okay i did enjoy my time doing it i hope you guys did as well hope you got some good romance reading in if you were doing this or trying to read romance around valentine's day because you know that was this week as well right and that's going to be it for me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos. I have videos coming out on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I will see you then. Bye!